you're seeing the birds do tonight is real and the birds are really going to be talking too. Once again, my name is Julie Cardoza. I'm here with my husband, Ed Cardoza. He's going to give you a big wave hi. And we have a very special show called Happy Birds. Marty would like to begin by saying hello. Say hello. Ah. Aw. Now, Marty's a really neat guy because of a lot of reasons. First of all, he's super smart. Are you smart? Yeah. Next of all, he's good looking. And one thing that may you may not be able to see is he's actually 31 years old. These birds can live a long time. Parrots can live up to 80 years. They're a tremendous effort to train and take care of, but we're passionate about what we do. And our goal is to provide the best home we possibly can for all of our beautiful pets. Now, these guys are pets. They're really just companion animals. They love to hang out with us, but they don't just want to sit around and do nothing, okay? Just like me and you are always asking to learn new things. So that's why you're here on this call to learn about parrots. So I'll tell you all about these birds while they're going to be highly entertaining. They're going to be riding a bicycle and they really talk and sing. So go ahead and let's hear Marty say hello again. Say hello. <laughs> he was really cute, wasn't he? Now I'm holding my iPad. I got to put it over here. I usually have an iPad so I can see you guys. So I'll be able to see your faces during the show. You just won't be able to unmute. Now, speaking of being on mute, you can do a lot of things to let people know that you're super engaged and you're watching a live show. For example, you could nod your head if you agree with something like, are these real parrots? Can you nod your head? Yes, because that's the answer. Are you real? Good, good. Or if you don't agree with something, you could shake your head no, like this. Do you see the bird? That's Marty shaking his head no. But he also knows a very special one. He knows the head sign for maybe. So here it is, everyone. <laughs> so next time you are on a Zoom call and you are not too sure, you can turn your head around for maybe, okay? Will you do that for me? I hope so. Now, Marty was gonna give me a big kiss. He loves me a lot. Give me a kiss. These birds are our feathered babies. They're not from the wild. Uh, in fact, they've been living with us their whole life. So Marty's been living with Ed and I for 31 years. So that's why he kisses me and I like to kiss him. In fact, I like to get a kiss on the lips. Do you want to kiss me again? On the lips, right? Oh, he just said no. <laughs> well, why not? Do I have bad breath? I do. He thinks I have bed breath. Come on, I do not. I brush my teeth every day. Smell my breath. <sighs> Oh, no. Did you see what this bird just did? He fell over. He thinks I have bad breath. It's not true. I brush my teeth every day. Now, he must kiss me on the lips. And since you're all on mute, you're going to have to help out in some other way, right? I want everyone to count to three with their fingers. And that way, Marty will see you and he'll kiss me on the lips. Here we go. Yeah, thanks a lot for helping out everyone. Now we have some books here on the Happy Bird Studio table. And these are some of the books from our own private collection, but you could check these out at the Middle Country Public Library. Now, if you went to South America, you would hear the word papagayo because that's what they call parrots down there. Our next book is called The Parakeet Girl. So if you've been doing any traveling this summer in the car, this is a great paperback book. You can pop it in the car and read it on your travels, especially if you're in the grade grades one through three. Now, Here's a new one. This one's a brand new one for our collection. It's called If You Were a Parrot. So think about it. These birds can ride bicycles, but if you were a parrot, you wouldn't have hands to hold on to the bicycle. You'd have to use your beak, okay? So there's a lot of interesting things to ponder when you read this book. Uh, we love this one because of the pictures. We've got these two cockatoos on here and our bird in the show, the star of the show, Marty, is a cockatoo. So Cockatoo 2, a fun, really easy reader you can check out. Uh, Mighty is always a new one in our collection. We haven't quite gotten through all the pages yet, but there's certainly a lot of nice pictures in there. And it talks a little bit about how parrots can be very uh, misunderstood because they're so smart. And last but not least is a very special book that we would like to sh showcase during our performance tonight, the Guinness World Records 2016. We actually have a parrot that's in this book and you're gonna meet him in just a few minutes. All right, that being said, I am going to put Marty on our tabletop so he can raise up the American flag. He's gonna walk across the table. You're gonna see him passing by the camera's eye and he uses his beak to help him pull on this cord. So here's a cord for the parrot to pull and the flag goes right up. Isn't that amazing? Cool, that's great, Marty. Thank you so much. Now, Marty's a very amazing bird because he's so smart. We respect all of his energy and all of his, uh, his personality uh, traits. He's just a really neat guy, right? 
Mm -hmm. And because he likes to do fun things, we trained him to ride a bicycle. So he is going to ride his own parent sized bicycle, which is right here. Okay. Now he rides the bicycle different than the way you'd ride your bicycle. Marty actually rides on the bicycle backwards. He pedals with his beak. That's right. Do not adjust your computer. This bird is really riding backwards. Stop. Uh oh. Marty just rode right off that table. Hey, get over here. Are you a reckless driver? <laughs> he is. Now, Marty also likes to ride on a scooter. So remember how we talked about if you were a parrot? If you were a parrot, you wouldn't have any hands. So you would use your beak to hang on to the handlebar. Marty can use his beak to hold on tight. Now, his beak is also shaped like a hook. So you can see him how he really grips on. Good job. Let's get going, Marty. Go. All right. That was cool, wasn't it? It takes a lot of time to train these birds to do all these cool tricks. Something that takes less than 30 seconds for Marty to do could take him a couple of years to get really good at. Luckily for him, he's been performing most of his life. So he's really good at what he does, right? Yeah, you're very agreeable tonight, aren't you? <laughs> Let's see him play basketball, okay? I have, yes, I said basketball. Do you like sports? Good. Does anybody play basketball? Raise your hand if you like to shoot hoops. I only like to shoot hoops if I can make the basket. So here, that was fun. <laughs> Let me see Marty do it, okay? We came to watch the birds perform. Marty's got the ball. He's dribbling down the court. He's up for a basket. Will he make it? Yeah. Show me how much you like that trick. Go, yay. Cool. Thanks a lot, everyone. Thanks for being so patient tonight, too. And you know, Marty here, he's a pretty cool guy. And he likes to do things a little bit different. And you probably noticed that by his performance. But high above our Happy Bird Studio is something extra special. We have a parrot-sized zip line here in our Happy Bird Studio. So Marty is going to ride on his zip line. Okay, all right, here we go, Marty. Ready, set, go! Nice. You were fun to watch. You are so much fun. Now this white cockatoo is called the Triton cockatoo. He's not from the wild, but in the wild, they're native to Australia and Indonesia. So if you ever went on vacation or across the world, you can see these birds flying in the jungle. Now, Marty, of course, is not from the wild at all. So where did he come from? Well, we all know he hatched out of an egg, right? But uh, the, this bird was raised here in California. It's kind of hard for some people to get their head wrapped around. It's like, well, he's not from the wild. Where did he come from? Well, just like if you were to get a pet, maybe a dog or a cat, parrots are uh, animals that people can have as pets. But I'm here to tell you that they're really challenging pets. One of the reasons they're so challenging is because they are so smart. They need a lot more attention than a dog or a cat. Uh, the other reason why is because they can live such a long time, up to 80 years, truly. That is a very long time to have a pet, the same pet. <laughs> and the other thing is that they are super noisy. I think it's like not a deterrent for many people that, oh, they're really noisy. But when they're noisy all the time, it can really get in your ears and it can be very irritating. But one of the, one of the things that's really awesome, though, is that they can actually talk. So one uh, popular reason people like to keep parrots is because they're thinking, well, I'm going to get a parrot and it likes to, it's going to talk to me. Well, not, mo not many parrots talk like the one you're looking at right now. She is truly unique and has some of the most amazing talents. And she's been able to share these talents around the world thanks to the internet, social media, and now live performances such as this for your library on Zoom. So this is our bird, Corbell, and she's a very excited little bird. She does talk, but how does she do it? Parrots use their throat when they're talking. Okay. By the way, if you're thinking you have questions, we're going to be able to answer your questions via chat after our show. So if you want to keep us on the line a little bit longer, if you're thinking of some good questions you could ask and you can type them into the chat window and then Jessica can read them off. Okay. So I'm going to tell you as much as I know about these birds in a very entertaining way. So this is our bird, Corbell. She's 38 years old and she's been on the Tonight Show and Pet Star. She really is incredible and you want to be looking at the throat when she's talking because you're going to be able to see the feathers moving on her neck okay when i was pointing to my neck she was coughing did you hear that all right so she's not sick she's just pretending so what's your name Corbell. good girl now corbell said her own name she does all kinds of sound effects like a car alarm <laughs> a car alarm hey you're funny you know that yeah all right now i like it but it's really loud it hurts my ears so what's your name Corbell. good girl let's do a rooster okay say cock a little doo <laughs> 
A cat. Meow. A dog. <laughs> Coyote. Ow. Cool. Do you hear that? Now, Corbell used her throat for all those sounds. And she even makes some human sounds that just coughing. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> now I know that's not a human sound, but I bet you could make that sound, right? <laughs> and when we make that sound, we actually make that sound from our throat too. Corbell's going to sing some opera. So can you sing? Wow, that was really good. I'm big smile because I'm just like, you did such a great job. So you can even cry like a baby. <laughs> Aw, can you cry? <laughs> <laughs> She's very excited. I think I need a little different kind of, can you give me a spray bottle, please? Thank you. Corbell's getting pretty excited today. Oh, there we go. All right, can you cry? Cry. <laughs> Aw. <laughs> Well, you did a really good job, but I think you might need a diaper change, huh? Uh-oh. She really crying? No, she's just faking it. You can tell, huh? She did a really good job. She's all done. She's going to say goodbye. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. 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 All right. I'm going to give you a round of applause. You did a great job. Okay. Corbell is leaving now. She talked the whole show. I love you, too. Did you love Corbell? Because we really love Corbell a lot. All right, she's popping over there. We get to bring on another beautiful bird whose name is Floyd. Floyd is a blue throat macaw, and you're going to see how this species gets its name as soon as I show him to the camera. All right, so I hope you're having a good time today. Hey, Jessica, are you still with us right now? I sure am. How do you like these birds so far? They're awesome. I'm loving them. Thank you. Was it worth the, was it worth the wait? <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> Thank goodness. You're so patient. You know, it, it, you can always tell a good library when she handles that pressure so well, right? And yeah. you're like, oh my sweating, like, oh my gosh, you can't get the video, right? What's going on? You know? <laughs> well, <laughs> but we figured it out. We're loving yeah, it. it. It's all part of real life, right? So you have to be patient and then the magic can happen. So uh, do you have any pets, Jessica? Yes, I do. What do you what kind of pets do you have? I have a small eight pound dachshund, one of the hot eight pound dogs. Dachshund. Cool. Yeah. So what do you, what do you think weighs more, this bird or your dog? Mm, I'm thinking my dog, maybe. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> uh, dog is, your dog is much heavier than any uh, parrot species. This is our bird Floyd, everybody. And he's a special guy. He's a bird we adopted into our happy bird show. He's much older than your dog. He's actually 28 years old. Now, Floyd's a blue throat macaw. He's a rare species, and you can see the blue on his neck. That's how this species gets its name. Now, Floyd's a very smart bird, and when we adopted him into our show eight years ago, he started learning tricks right away, and I'm going to show you a trick that he learned all by himself. Here's a little treat that Floyd likes to eat. This is a macadamia nut, and I'll put it right here in my bucket. Just like if you want to teach your dog to do a little fun trick, right? Everybody's having a good time. We get a special snack. So Floyd's a self-learner. He actually taught himself how to pull this rope up in order to get the food. You can see how he uses his foot and his beak to help him with the job. Parrots are really, really powerful birds. They're mentally and physically very, very strong. But he has a great desire for that snack because he really likes macadamia nuts. He's looking for it, I think. It's underneath all the rope that he put inside the bucket as he was lifting it up. It's like, can I, I can't find it. Where is it? It's lost. <laughs> He's looking at the camera like, where did it go? Would you stop showing off for the camera, please? Just get the nut. Well, I'll give it to you. <laughs> what happened to it? It's not in there. What in the world? You saw me put it in, right, people? I'm going to put another nut in there so he can take it out. Gosh, that was really wild. I don't know what happened to it. When you review the video, maybe you'll see it like fly out or something. I don't know. So I put another piece of food in there. He's got it. He's using his foot as if he had a hand. So his foot is kind of like a convertible. You know, it's a foot. Okay. And then when he's eating, it becomes a hand. Let me give him one more. Oh, those are really good, he says. Who doesn't like macadamia nuts? I prefer mine with chocolate, but parrots can't have that. Now I'm gonna put Floyd on the table. He's gonna show you a trick or two. He's a pretty neat guy. What's really neat about Floyd is that he is so beautiful. Uh, he is very smart. 
and we actually rescued this bird. He actually needed a home desperately. His owner could not place him into a home. She had a hardship and she was gonna have to bring her bird to an animal shelter. Well, we stopped that because we actually have an animal rescue. It's called Friends for Pets. And with that animal rescue, we've been able to rehome over 400 pets. Floyd found his forever home with Happy Bird. So now he works for us. Now, what is uh, Floyd going to do? He's going to save his money today. Now you saw him pull up the, um, the bucket using his beak, but he also uses his tongue. Parrots can use their tongue the way we use our finger. Birds have bones inside their tongue and parrots' tongues are specialized. They can use their tongue for a lot of things. I don't think they taste a whole lot with their tongues, but they can use their tongue to touch things and hold very small items. That was great, Floyd. He's doing so good that we're gonna let him try a brand new trick. This is a difficult trick for Floyd. So honestly, if he's not in the mood, we don't use it in the show, but he is doing great. And I wanna make sure all of you see the best possible show you can see tonight. So here we have a shopping cart. Okay, and I want you to think about this, people. We have a shopping cart. What do parrots eat? They don't eat pizza, right? They have to eat healthy foods that include seeds, nuts, fruits, and vegetables. So today I'm holding a yellow fruit. Are you thinking about what it is? Did you say banana? Because Floyd's gonna put a banana in the cart. The next item is a vegetable. So can you think of any orange vegetables? Okay, did you say carrot? I know you're tempted to say orange because I said orange, right? But an orange is not a vegetable, it's a fruit. But that carrot is definitely something that Floyd would like to eat. How about waffles? Should parrots eat waffles? No, they should not eat them. But some people that own parrots feed them people food like pizza, french fries, hamburgers, chicken, even waffles. But we would never do that. We want our bird to live a long, healthy life. And we fill them with only the good stuff. Floyd, you did great. You did really good. Yes, you did. You want to do your happy dance? That's his happy dance. He's very happy. And you might see his face turning red. He's actually blushing. You're making the video blurry, Floyd. <laughs> He's just really cute. All right, I'm going to put him up. But now we get to meet the biggest parrot in our show. Tonight, you're going to meet three macaws. Floyd's the first macaw called a blue throat. This next guy is the biggest of all macaws. He's called a hyacinth macaw. Now, his skin is actually yellow. So you can see that uh, he has yellow skin, it's quite beautiful, but at a distance you might think that's probably fur or hair or feathers, it's not, it's actually his skin. Now Gordon's a really fun guy because he's very active, he's super playful, he likes to play with my fingers, it looks like he's actually biting me, but he's not. Uh, he does like to touch my hands with his mouth because he doesn't have any hands. So Gordon is going to show you his tricks now. By the way, Gordon is 19 years old. He's the bird that's in the Guinness book. I'll show you why in a minute. Come on, Gordon. Let's show him your table tricks first, okay? Now, Gordon loves to perform. It's fun for him, and he loves learning, practicing, and getting tons of attention for all of his really amazing talents. Come on. Come on, Gordon. Wow, that was really good. Good job. <laughs> Dad greased up the pedals a couple of days ago. There used to be a big squeak. Eat, eat, eat. And now he's like, this is great. I can go really fast. Now, Gordon can even ride on a skateboard. We got a brand new skateboard. Okay. I have the old one. Let me show you guys. But the, this is the old skateboard. Here's the new skateboard. Do you see why we needed to replace it? Somebody's been chewing on it. So if you have a pet, like a dog or a puppy, you know they like to chew a lot. Parrots like to chew all the time. Come on, Gordon. Good job, Gordon. Let's see you go back this way. Come on, Gordon. Isn't he cool? All right, you are really good looking and fun to watch. All right, now Gordon's, like I said, very playful, super destructive. So we have a fun trick for Gordon to do. He is going to try to knock down these bowling pins, okay? Now, of course, uh, Gordon is a very smart bird, but uh, when we play with them, uh, we can get ideas for our show. So let's say I have brought these bowling pins uh, and Gordon, do you want to play with these? So he has to get really activated and playful. And if he's super playful, he'll run over and knock these pins down. Okay, I'm going to say ready, set, go. And then you have to run over there and knock those down, okay? Are you ready to try this? Are you ready? Okay, ready, get set, and go. Come on, Gordon. Oh yeah, he got a strike. Good job. All right, now on to something a little more serious, the Guinness Book of World Records. How in the world did Gordon get in the Guinness Book? Well, he had to set some kind of record, right? 
Well, here it is. He can actually remove bottle caps from bottles of soda. His beak is so strong, he can crack any nut he can fit inside of his mouth. So of course he can open up a bottle of soda, but it took time and practice, just like learning to read takes time and practice. So Gordon, he can open more than one bottle, but tonight he's just gonna do one. Let's take a look at his powerful beak. Okay, Gordon, come on over and show him what you're made of here. Oh, look at that. Oh, he's working hard. He couldn't quite get it open yet. Come on, Gordon, you can do it. There we go. Come on, push, 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 push. Yeah, he did it. He removed that cap. Now, the cap is not a toy, but he does like to chew on it. So we'll let him chew on that and create a special sculpture for you to see in just a minute. While he's busy, I'll show you the book. Believe me, if he wasn't busy, he'd be trying to chew on this book because parents don't read. They like to eat the books. All right, here is the Guinness book. All right, that's right. He's in the Guinness book. He opened 12 bottles of soda in 60 seconds. His parents are so proud of him. Gordon's a famous bird. He was also on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. You can even find him on YouTube. So if you search YouTube for The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, Parrot Opens a Bottle, you'll see Gordon. All right, so Gordon's got the bottle cap. He's almost done with his sculpture. Gordon's a very rare species of macaw called a hyacinth. They're native to Brazil. Gordon, Gore, uh, our bird Floyd, the next bird you're gonna meet, Forrest, all of our parrots, these guys are locally raised. They're not from the jungle. Okay, I, I think you're done now. He will not let go of that bottle cap until I show him a nut. So don't you think I should give him one? Yeah. So look, Gordon, this is your favorite. There he goes. So he's gonna crack that nut using that beak. He doesn't have any teeth. And of course you should never use your mouth to try to break open a nut like that or remove a bottle cap from a bottle of soda. But these guys have a beak that's always growing. They chew constantly. They're, they don't go through a, a chewing phase. If their chewing phase lasts about, what, 80 years, Ed? <laughs> it's, it's really challenging to get uh, through that beak. You know, you tell them, don't chew that furniture, and they do it anyways. All right, here's the, the bottle cap, OK? Uh, this is a bottle cap taco, I want you all to know. Do not try to eat it, but it's a really nice piece of jewelry. I'm going to make a necklace. All right, Gordon, I'm going to pop you up. I hope you're liking the show. Uh, if you are, I'd like to give, I'd love to get some feedback. Is it fun? Give me a thumbs up. Give me some, maybe a big smile, right? All right, thank you. Thank you so much. Have you guys started school yet? Are you starting school? Not yet? Really? Okay, some of the kids here, right? Jessica's no way. We want summer to last like another month longer. Um, some people don't start till September, but the kids in our city in California, they all started uh, this week. Uh, so their Friday is their first Friday of the year. Our daughter's a school teacher, Jessica. She's actually a seventh grade teacher. So uh, teaching parents, teaching kids, uh, it's something that runs in the family. Um, this is our bird for us, and he's a good looking guy. We've had this bird 31 years, and you know they can live a long time. They're not going to live their full potential unless they have a lot of mental stimulation, a great environment, and of course, lots of healthy foods fresh fruits and vegetables. Am I talking about you? Because <laughs> we need all of that too. We need that. Now, when we play with the birds, it's a lot of fun for them and for us, okay? We're gonna play a game right now. So all of you get to play along, even though you're on mute, you still get to play because I can see your faces over there, okay? All right, we're gonna play the shell game. Uh, this is a shell game where you get three cups and then I hide this toy, okay? What I'm gonna do now is mix them all up. All you gotta do is watch the cup with the <laughs> that's not supposed to happen he's not following the rules right so we need to train this bird not to do that do you think parrots can learn rules i question that if you want to help out he can see your video right now i want you to put your finger up like this and sternly i'll say no 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 don't do that again let's see if that works okay i'll be right back Oh man, you see what he just did? Well, clearly they don't follow rules very well, but they are very smart. So we're gonna play this game together. Everybody ready? All right, I'm gonna say go, go. I know Jessica's listening. Hey, Jessica, could you unmute and say stop for me? Say stop. Stop. Good, all right. So I know I mixed them up a long time. So you have to really focus on your screen if you're gonna know where it's at. But if you don't know, we're just gonna guess, okay? I'm gonna number these one. So my finger's up here for number one. 
This is going to be two. I'm holding two fingers in the middle one, okay? And this one's number three. So if you'd like to vote so I can see you, I want you to put your fingers up to where, tell me where you think it is. Take a guess if you're not sure. Okay, let's see if you're right. Were you right? It's number one. All right, that was really good. That was super hard. I should have asked for Jessica's help earlier. So this time we'll make it run a little bit shorter so that everybody can really focus on the cup. So Jessica, this time you say go. Okay, go. Okay, and I'm gonna put you in charge of saying stop too. Say stop whenever you want. Stop. Okay, so friends, you wanna guess again? Show me your fingers. Is it one, two, or three? What do you think? All right, I think you got it. It is number two. Awesome job. Very good. Should I give you a treat? It would be a healthy snack, like a sunflower seed probably, right? That'd be good for you. Look, he cleaned up his toy. This macaw is called a green wing. Forrest has been with our family for a long time. He was hatched out of an egg in Napa Valley, California in 1990. He's still with us today. When he was five years old, he learned how to roller skate. Let me show you a skate. This is like the cutest thing. See him? Aren't they cute? Now, this big bird has been practicing on his skating for a very long time. Let's see how good he is. All right, ready, get set. Everybody say go with me, go. There he goes, look at that. Whoa, what do you think? Is he fast or is he slow? He's fast, he's fast for a parrot. All right, he's gonna, he's gonna show his wings. He's a beautiful and friendly macaw and his name is Forrest. Now his face patch is white. And you see those red lines on his face? Those are actually tiny feathers that give it that pattern. All right, Forrest says he wants his snacks. I'll go ahead and put, put him up on his high perch. We have another bird that talks, everyone. Sometimes when you see these birds, you've gotta be wondering, is this really real? But the truth is that our library and Jessica from Middle County Public Library would never hire a fake parrot show, okay? So that when you're watching these shows here at the library, you can be sure that things we're saying are as truthful as possible and all of the birds are real. And then when they're performing, they're really doing these things, okay? This is our bird Yaki and she's extra famous. She actually is a bird who's been on the Tonight Show, the Ellen Show and Pet Star. She's been all over the world on our videos. Oh, we have a little upside down video ed <laughs> i don't know what happened sorry hopefully it's not technical issues are just part of life unfortunately okay so we have parrots but we're going to fix the video in a second give me a sec so this is yaki and she actually belonged to a little old lady named rosalie so years ago uh, back in 1988, this bird hatched out of an egg, and Yaki is her name. A little, a little old lady named Rosalie bought Yaki at a pet shop, okay? And she had this little bird as her pet. Well, Rosalie sang songs to Yaki, and Yaki learned to sing from Rosalie. Yaki just one of these very special birds with a unique talent. Now she's going to share the, her talents with you. Now, we adopted Yaki in 1992 and started training Yaki for our show all those years ago. Hi, Yaki. Hello. Good. All right, Yaki, can you count to four? One, two, three, four. Good girl. I'm going to just kind of turn her perch a little bit so she's going to be singing into my microphone. Can you warm up? Now you can really see those feathers moving, right? So whenever you like hear a parrot talking, be, be looking at the throat a little bit because those feathers should be moving a little bit. All right, Yaki's gonna sing her song. It's called Clementine. I start her off by singing the first verse and then Yaki joins in from there. Here we go. <clears throat> oh, my darling. Oh, my darling. That's cool. Good job. Good job, Yaki. Yeah, you bouncing around out there because she's so good, right? And this is not a recorded video. This is live, right? So you're seeing it for the first time. Yaki's going to try another song. It's a little bit harder, a little bit longer. It's called Rockabye Birdie. Rockabye Birdie. You know Rockabye Baby, right? Well, she's no baby. She's 35 years old. This song is called Rockabye Birdie. Here we go. Tweet, 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 Yaki. Rockabye birdie 
Excellent concentration by Yaki. Oh, that's a long song for a little bird to do, don't you think? Yaki, you did great. You did a really good job. Yeah, you're so beautiful and green. She never changes her clothes. She just molts. <laughs> when they molt, they're losing all these feathers all over the place. And she grows new ones back, and they look so beautiful. All right, Yaki, say goodbye. Bye-bye. All right, you did a really good job, Yaki. Oh, mm. so cute. Oh, mm. I love you. She said, I love you. You could hear that clearly, huh? That was the bird. All right, I'm going to pop her back behind the scenes. We're going to wrap up this show with the biggest trick of all. The biggest trick is really exciting. Um, I'm excited to share the birds with you because I know that like you've never seen a bird show like this before. Uh, we've been doing birthday parties for kids for years. You know, I'm talking like 30 years. But, you know, when we do a virtual show like this, it's like you've never seen this show before because we're all the way in California and you're all the way in New York. So that's what's really special is that seeing this show and seeing you guys be all excited about it, it really makes our day. So thank you very much for watching. And of course, uh, Jessica, you're welcome to post this video onto your uh, social media, your website, so people can see the recorded version of this show. But when you join in live, that's what makes it extra special. By the way, if you like what you see, we offer this program for school assemblies online, birthday parties, and also clubs and family gatherings. So if you have a, a need for a virtual entertainer, maybe you might consider inviting us to perform for you. Did you just pull my hair? Did you just pull my hair? Oh, did you just bite my finger? No, he didn't bite my finger, don't worry. He was just being friendly, okay? Now, Gordon's a very sweet bird. He does have a strong beak capable of cracking hard nuts, but he does love and respect his family and we love and respect him, okay? So we have a very respectful relationship. Now, this guy, Gordon, is gonna try to swing upside down. It's a hard trick. The reason it's so hard is because he has to pump and push his body to make the swing go all the way around in a big circle, okay? There's a heavy weight on one side and the bird's gonna get on the other. When I count to three, everybody can out, out there can clap your hands so Gordon can see all the action, waving your hands, clapping your hands, creating some kind of movement. And that way Gordon will definitely do his best and go all the way around for you. Here we go. One, get ready, two, and three. Let's see how busy you are. Come on, everybody. I'm showing Gordon right now. Oh my goodness, look at all this action out here. Oh, there he oh, oh, he didn't go upside down yet. He didn't go upside down, but he's gonna do it. All right, let's show me one finger, everybody. One, show me two fingers, two, show me three fingers, three, show me four fingers. And let's do one more time, five times. Nice job by the audience, good job. All right, well, Gordon did really good. Gordon's our largest parrot. He's our highest at the macaw with yellow skin and blue feathers. He's going to head right up to his high perch so he can eat his yummy snack. When we teach and train the birds, everyone, they don't do it just because they want the food. They want to do it because it's fun for them and because they get tons of attention. They enjoy that. They enjoy completing the task. We do have a very special bird that I like to include in our program tonight who can fly. Uh, people do ask a lot of times, can the parrots fly? And our birds do fly in our aviary outside, which is a safe place for our birds to fly. But this studio, although it's quite large, is not big enough for our macaws to fly in. So we do have a special smaller parrot who's gonna fly right over to the camera to see you. This is Piper. Piper is a slender bill cockatoo. The beak is long and skinny. That's why they're called slender bills. They're native to Eastern Australia, but Piper's not from the wild. She's from Ventura, California. Now Piper's gonna fly up over the camera. Oh, wow, that's nice. I can feel a little air conditioning. All right, good job. Now we're also celebrating Piper's birthday. So her last trick or our last trick in our show is for Piper to dance. And if I sing happy birthday to Piper, she can really show you her moves. This will be the, our last trick in the show. So if you have some questions for us, you're welcome to type them into the chat window. And then Jessica can read them off while I'm holding one of the birds after the show, okay? All right, here's happy birthday. I will sing it and Piper will dance. Here we go. Happy birthday. Day to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Piper. Happy birthday to you. Cha cha cha. One more. 
Oh, one more cha-cha. There we go. Good job. Cute, Piper. You danced really good tonight. Yes, you did. You danced beautifully. Did you have fun? You did. And you say bye. <laughs> You're say woo. woo. So I do that. I'm like, woo. woo. And then she copies me. Woo. woo. Okay. She's got all woo. the good moves. Can you do it? Do a headstand. Good. Let me show your wings. Where's oh, angel wings. Those are beautiful. Right. All right. I'm going to pop her back in her private dressing room. I like to call Jessica back on the line again, see what she says about this show. What do you think about this show, Jessica? Amazing. We loved it. Oh, that's great. I'm so glad you recorded it too. Yes. Um, it's a lot of fun to see again. Uh, that way uh, people can share. Uh, you can see the video while it's posted. I don't know how long you keep it up on the website, but uh, definitely want to encourage people to take a look at that. Great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Does Do we have any questions, questions from the audience? I mean, I can unmute now if that's cool with you, Julie. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. Why, why don't you handle all the uh, Q&A? We have about, yeah. you know, three, three, or four, three or four minutes to answer questions. Yeah, let's see. I might be able to just do it. Allow panelists to unmute. All right, guys. I think you should be allowed now to unmute yourselves if you want to chime in and ask a special question. Look at this beautiful bird. Isn't it pretty? It looks great on the screen. So beautiful. How did you get into this? Mm -hmm. Well, um, Ed and I started Happy Birds in 1989. We really... Uh, love animals and just if you have a pet or two and when we uh, first met uh, we, we decided on getting a parrot and we loved the idea of having parrots they were just so cool that we couldn't stop at just getting one well after buying a few birds we realized that they can live such a long time and that we have a natural knack for training them to do fun tricks. So we started adopting other people's pets. We developed the show because the birds just love to learn and they love to have a good time. And so once we started teaching our parrots, we had this parrot show. Well, today, fast forward 30 years later, we have a lot of parrots. We have birds that we purchased, but many of our birds are birds we adopted or rescued. And that's pretty much how we're going to keep it going. So we started with our love for animals and parrots. We realize now that maybe buying baby birds is not such a great idea. So we no longer buy baby parrots, only rescue and adopt. So thanks for that question. That's lovely. All right. Does somebody have a question? I I'm going to ask you to unmute. All right, I have a question for the audience. We can, I can ask a trivia question. You guys want to answer a trivia question? Okay, first of all, everyone knows that birds hatch out of eggs, right? Okay, I have a question for you. How big was the egg that this bird hatched out of? Was it the size of a tennis ball, a football, or a ping pong ball? What do you think? Shout out your answer now. A ping pong ball. I think I think it's a ping pong mm -hmm. a tennis ball. Tennis ball. tennis ball. Okay, I'm gonna give you the answer now in three seconds. Three, two, one. Ping pong ball was the answer. And it took a, a very a very long time for him to learn to do fun tricks in our show because parents uh, do take time to mature. But how long did it take for him to get to be full size? Okay. So Forrest learned, so he started learning his first tricks when he was five years old. But how long did it take for him to get to become the size he is today? So here's my next question How long did it take Forrest to grow up? Was it Mm, three months, three years, or one year? Um, one year. Two years. One year. One year. Okay. Two years. All right, the answer is three months. It took them three months to get to be this big. So they grow up uh, their size into the full size in three months, but they take about three to five years to really mature up here. So Forrest started learning his tricks when he was about five years old, and now he's an expert at roller skating and playing the shell game. Well, friends, it looks like we have run out of time. Uh, unless there are any more questions, we're going to say goodbye. I just want to thank you, Julie and Ed, so much for a fabulous show. And thank, thank you, you, everybody, for attending and great job reading this summer.
Yeah, good job, everyone. Keep up your tricks, okay? All right, Forrest, can you say goodbye? Goodbye. All right, you said goodbye. Goodbye, everyone. Hey, Thank you very much. Um, excuse me.